Good afternoon, everyone. My name is David Moore. I'm the police chief uh, in Janesville. Um, I appreciate you coming in at uh, relative short notice. We sent a Nixle message out early this morning uh, announcing this uh, press conference. We believe this to be the most efficient way to get the information to you. And I think you, you will sense we're trying to get this information to you as quickly uh, as we can to keep both the media and our community informed as to the developments of what are really three separate um, cases. Uh, the first one I'll speak to is the Brittany Cross homicide. Um, detectives continue to work on the timeline on this uh, homicide. Um, we are still interested into the activities of Miss Cross and uh, suspect Courtney. One development that has changed things at least significantly for us is the witness who was attacked by Mr. Courtney up on Pontiac Drive, now says Courtney's statement was, I have killed three people. We are all going to die tonight. Before that statement was reported to us as, I have killed three people tonight, we are all going to die. The movement of that tonight statement from the first sentence to the second sentence changes things considerably. We have a much wider timeline that we are interested in of Mr. Courtney's activities. We continue requ to request uh, citizens assistance. We're particularly interested in Friday, May 2nd from 8 o'clock p.m. until 7 o'clock a.m. Saturday morning and also Sunday, May 4th from 5 o'clock p.m. to 10 o'clock p.m. Also, any suspicious activities or statements over the last several years because of this change with the statement regarding the time frame on these uh, alleged homicides. Uh, to date, we've received about 70 tips, uh, largely because of the help that the media has given us. Uh, many have been helpful. Um, if a citizen has already contacted us with some information, they don't need to do it again. But please, if you have information about Mr. Courtney's activities, particularly statements or concerning activities over the last few years, we are interested in that. I'm going to move to the missing person, Mary Coltar of 208 North Main Street. Um, as you know, we located uh, Miss uh, Coltar last uh, Friday afternoon. An autopsy was conducted on Saturday. That autopsy shows us that there was an injury prior to the drowning. We will not discuss the nature of the injury or location of the injury as we want to hold that information uh, back for the validity of the investigation. Nor can I tell you if it was incapacitating or not incapacitating. We simply don't know that answer. Also, Ms. Coulthard's purse was located in the 200 block of South Jackson Street Saturday morning, May 3rd. The purse and contents were turned over to uh, police and they're being sent to the Wisconsin State Crime Lab for DNA analysis. Some personal property was missing, we believe, and we will not uh, discuss as to what that personal property uh, is. Again, we continue to ask for citizens' assistance with uh, Ms. Uh, Coltart's uh, unfortunate uh, death and anybody that would have information concerning an injury she may have sustained or if somebody talks about an injury in the community, we're interested in that. If anybody talks about taking a purse or having a purse, we're interested in that. The last separate item I wish to speak with you on is missing person Gerald Hawkinson. Gerald Hawkinson was last seen at 120 North River Street Thursday, May 1st at 8 o'clock a.m. It was reported to us on May 7th um, this morning, and I'll mention to you that it was after that we announced this uh, press conference. Uh, detectives were able to obtain some sur a surveillance video from a bank in northern Wisconsin that conclusively shows that Mr. Hawkins Smith is still alive. He's, he's alive and well. He's in northern Wisconsin. That was as of 8.01 a.m. Uh, this morning when he was on that bank surveillance. Um, we have detectives in northern Wisconsin working to speak directly with Mr. Hawkins Smith as to uh, why he uh, decided to move up there, but it appears that in very short notice he just decided to uh, 
go to northern Wisconsin, not take much of his personal property with him, uh, whether it's a long-term move or a short-term term move, uh, we don't know yet, but uh, we're very encouraged that uh, Mr. Hawkinsmith is, is still with us. Um, like all of you in this room and many of you people in this community, uh, we were doing the math. We had an individual in our community that said he killed three people. We found one woman dead down by the Rock River, and we had two more people missing down by the Rock River over the period of four days. So it is with uh, some relief that we know that uh, Mr. Um, Hawkinsmith is still alive and, and with us. So with that, I'll entertain any questions you may have. Is there any reason to believe that uh, Ms. Coulthard and uh, Mr. Courtney Cross passed at all? We've not been able to show that they have. They, at this point, they seem to be two separate incidents. Is there any suspicion of foul play in Ms. Coulthard's death? There are three explanations one could make for Ms. Coulthard's death. That is a criminal act, an accidental act, or an act of suicide. And we're unable to prove any one of those three or have conclusive evidence to really even take us any one direction. Uh, those injuries could have been intended and, and by someone. They could have been a result of the fall, or they could have been a result of when she went into the river. We do know that the method of death, manner of death, is drowning. This injury occurred before that drowning. Is that a fresh injury, older injury? Fresh injury. You talked to us, Chief, just about expanding this timeline because, like you said, the word tonight was key in the initial witness statement. Um, it looks like you said uh, Friday, May 2nd now, and Sunday, May 4th. Reason to believe that he may have committed these crimes even before that, or if, if at all, at all? If they occurred, and again, we still take uh, Mr. Courtney at his word that he has killed three people, but if you take tonight out of that statement, that really opens it up, and it could, be, could have been over the last number of years. That's why we're interested in the behavior and the activity of Mr. Courtney and see where those fact sets take us in this investigation. Has he expanded on that statement with detectives at all, Mr. Courtney himself? Right, um, we're not gonna discuss any uh, further investigative leads in, in that area. How did that statement come to be changed? Uh, you said the witness just remembered it wrong? Or yeah, it was a follow-up interview. We oftentimes go back and talk to witnesses uh, later after the event, uh, many times in the heat of the moment. Uh, some of those statements can be inaccurate, and our detectives uh, go about their business and recontact the witness, and it was that recontact that took us to the fact that uh, the, the statement was different. So you're especially interested in his activities on May 2nd and May 4th? Yes. But it could be a span of years. It could you, be. So right. Can you explain why you're focused on those two days? Sure. Um, on May 4th, um, we know that that was the evening before or about the time frame uh, that uh, Brittany was killed. And so that is our interest with it. And we know that Mary Coulthard uh, disappeared the evening of May 2nd. And we are yet to put that timeline together with Mr. Courtney, so we're interested in, in those times. So they're, they're directly related to the uh, uh, Brittany Cross and Mary Coulthard um, cases. But again, we are interested in multiple years in suspicious activities, suspicious statements that Mr. Courtney may have made. Has Mr. Courtney been in Janesville? Or how long has Mr. Courtney been in Janesville? Uh, to my knowledge, he has always been in Janesville. Our officers were familiar with him for many years, since he was uh, quite young. Do you have any new motive for, um, I know that the homicide charges haven't been filed, but he is your lone suspect. Any new motive in talking to Brittany Cross's mom? She said that he was getting really jealous from her recently turning 21. Yeah, we don't have motive. Chief, you said you're interested in statements by Mr. Courtney. What are you? You include uh, social media statements, uh, things he might have written online. Have you guys looked at that? We do investigate uh, social media statements as a matter of regular investigations. We have done so in this case. And uh, certainly, if others have social media statements that we perhaps are unaware of, uh, we would be interested in that. 
get the information to us, we can vet it, and we can decide whether it's something that is of importance or perhaps not. Any more details on the weapon or the object that killed Mr. Cross? No. Are there any unsolved cases in Janesville that you're looking at that possibly being these other two of the three he's mentioned? Right. No, we have no unsolved cases that we would consider a fitting this vaccine. Do you have a, a witnesses or, or uh, written things uh, from uh, Mr. Courtney that indicate he might have been interested uh, some time ago, months ago, uh, in killing people? That is part of our investigation. Um, certainly, if Mr. Courtney had uh, showed an interest in killing people, that's part of the case, and those are the comments that we would be interested in. To answer your question directly, um, I'm not going to answer it. <laughs> hey. okay. Has Mr. Courtney been involved with any prior uh, burglaries or armed robberies at all that could have led up to Ms. Coltart's connection or if there are any at all? Nothing that would connect to Ms. Coltart. He did have some thefts, disorderly conducts, and um, I guess I don't recall what the other crimes were, but um, nothing directed to with Ms. Coltart. Do you expect to get a lot of uh, calls from people who uh, are missing loved ones uh, over the past couple of years now? That's a, a very good possibility. I would expect the calls and nature of the calls to be more about Mr. Coltard's activities and comments he has made. Mr. Courtney? I'm sorry, Mr. Courtney, yes. Um, comments that he has made versus uh, missing people. But certainly if there are some missing folks, we would want to look at that. Are you widening your net sheet to other departments in the area? Um, though uh, Mr. Courtney has lived here all his life, it's possibly travel outside the area. Yes, we've uh, expanded that to all of southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois. Okay. Is the FBI involved? We have consulted uh, with the FBI um, just in the event that we need assistance, but there has been no direct assistance at all. They stand ready to assist with whatever we need. Do you think it's possible that he was lying or bragging or something that, that he may not have, have done this? Certainly, and it's our hope that he was lying or bragging, but we've got a young woman that's dead in our community, and uh, we believe that Mr. Courtney did that, and that's right in line with his statements that he has killed. Is there any contact with Mr. Hackensmith? I know the surveillance is 8 a.m., but have you made contact with this person? Right. Um, Perhaps. I can tell you that we, our detectives are speaking with detectives in northern Wisconsin, and we want to make that face-to-face -face, uh, contact with him. But I must tell you that the video surveillance that our detectives uh, obtained is persuasive, and we feel that the person that showed up this, at this bank and took money out of Mr. Hawkinsmith's account is Mr. Hawkinsmith, based on what is a pretty clear video that we saw. Do you consider uh, Mr. Courtney a suspect in Mary Coulthard's death? No. We've not even connected the two. Has he been officially ruled out, or is it still something that... Uh, no, he's not been ruled out, but um, we need to connect crimes in Wisconsin and in this United States before we uh, start making those type of statements in terms of suspects. Are the injuries to Ms. Cross and Ms. Coulthard consistent with each other? same type of injury or? They were significantly different. Just to uh, ask the question, uh, any connection between Hawking Smith and Coulthard that you can tell? None. Okay. There, there was a rock found in um, uh, Mr. Courtney's back pocket when he was um, uh, uh, detained initially. Could that have been, you know, could that have been a possible murder weapon? Could have been is a pretty wide open statement, and I would say that it could have been, yes. Um, we have it in evidence. I don't know if that was one of the items that we sent to the Wisconsin State Crime Lab for uh, DNA analysis or not, um, but we do have it and we'll be assessing that evidence. Have you gotten any DNA evidence back from things you've sent up there? We have not. No DNA evidence back. So Chief, just to be clear then, so the original statement was, I've killed three people, we're all going to die tonight. Now the statement is, I've killed three people tonight, we're all going to die? It's reversed. The it original is. statement was, I've killed three people tonight. Correct.
Okay. I think we've exhausted all the questions here. Again, thank you, everybody. We have um, copies of the press release. If you don't have it, that will be going out online. There are Nixle items here. If you're not being noticed by JPD, get on our Nixle. We push this information out 24-7. Uh, the other flyers that we've sent out previously are available for you here as well. Thank you. We're done.